Hello everyone, Salaamu Alaikum. This is Muhammad Jahangir Alam Bapi, Assistant Teacher, Cantonment Public School and College, Sayyidpur. I am going to take a class based on our environment, which is the chapter of class 5, English version. Okay, so the first online class is based on our environment. The students, we live in an environment. We live in a world where we used to stay in a particular environment and in our environment we all know there are two types of things what are those I know we all know that the things are living things and non-living things so first we'll come to your mind what is living things living things are nothing but which have life we we all are living things human beings the animals the trees plants all are living beings so what will be the definition of living beings living beings are nothing but which have life then if we come to the next thing which is non-living thing living thing and non-living thing so have a look non-living things i have tried to show you some examples of non-living thing look at this a fan houses cars stones lot of things even the smart card which i'm holding this is also a non-living thing the tv which you can see this is also a non-living thing you know we all are dependent on non-living thing so our next discussion topic will be non-living things the dependence of non-living things let's have a look at this okay so relation between living and non-living things we all are living things but we cannot survive without non-living things so the first point living things needs non-living things to survive so you will uh, there will be a question in your mind how the living things are dependent on non-living things yes we are living things look we depend on each other and need the non-living things like food food is a non-living thing and without food we cannot survive so the next one is air the most important thing in living things life what is air the atmospheric oxygen without oxygen can we survive we cannot survive so is oxygen a living thing or non-living thing yes oxygen is a non-living thing so without oxygen we cannot survive another thing water water is known as life we all know water is life so without water we cannot survive so dear students you can easily understand that we the living beings cannot survive without non-living things the next point without food water air living things die as i said a little while ago so i had a question for all of you look at this this guy is asking a question to his friend air sunlight are non-living things or not so I'm asking you the same question air water are they non-living things yes they are non-living things so plants need sunlight air and so on to make food look plant plant is a living thing plant can grow plant can plant can uh, give us uh, pl plant is a living thing so plant cannot survive without non-living thing like carbon dioxide look the non-living gas that we used to produce to plants they used to take it and then they used to leave so the non-living things without non-living things plants also cannot survive so we are going to the next slide so now we are going to learn about the dependence of living things on non-living things as we have discussed it earlier have a look human as we are human being human needs air as i said without oxygen no human being can survive another thing water as i said water is our life without water we cannot survive and the next thing the most important thing food without food we also cannot survive so from this particular thing we can say that human being is hugely dependent on non-living things another thing so come forward to have a look at the next picture we can see fishes under the water so 
water is a non-living thing, but fishes are living thing. So without water, the fishes cannot survive. So water here, the uh, here water is a non-living thing, on which a living thing fish depends on. Okay, the next one, soil. Soil is also a non-living thing, and there are a lot of animals which used to stay under the soil as a habitat. So without soil lot of animals cannot survive. So from this particular picture we also can say that animals or living things are hugely dependent on non-living things. Okay, in our next slide we can see the dependence of plants. As we all know plants is also a living things. Now we will learn how the plant is also dependent on non-living things. Let's have a look. Okay, so you can see a picture here in, the, in this particular picture, you can see or you can get the idea of photosynthesis. The students, do you know what is photosynthesis? Photo means light and synthesis means food production. So, with the help of light, when the plant used to produce food, that is known as photosynthesis. Look, the plant is a living thing and it is hugely dependent on sunlight, air, water and carbon dioxide which are nothing but non-living things. So dependence of plant on non-living things by this particular picture I wanted to telling you that without non-living things plant cannot survive. So in this particular picture if you saw you will get two important definitions. There will be in your mind what is habitat and what is ecosystem. So in our next picture or next slide we will learn what is habitat and what is ecosystem. Let's learn. Okay, we all know that we live in a society, we, we live in an environment. Our environment consists of different type of living and non-living things. So, from this particular picture, you can see that there is an ecosystem where different type of animals used to survive. So first, if I tell you about what is ecosystem, all the living things and non-living things where they interact each other that particular place is known as ecosystem. If you ask us, ask me that where we live, we also live in an ecosystem. Here, we all are, we, we the human beings, animals, plants, all are dependent on each other. That is why this is our ecosystem. If you ask what is habitat, look, the part of an environment where the plant and animal lives. Look, this is our habitat. We live in upper part of the soil. This is our habitat but if you consider about rodents or different type of insects they, they used to live under the soil that is their habitat. So habitat in, in a way we, you can also say that where plants or animals or insects used to live that is known as their habitat. Okay. So the next one. Look mutual dependence between plant and animals. Dear learners. First of all, you have to know what is mutual dependence. Mutual means without harming each other and dependence means depending on each other. So mutual dependence means living in an ecosystem without harming each other. So we know that in an ecosystem there lives both plants and animals. So let's have a look how the animals are depending on the plants and the plants are depending on the animals without harming each other. As they are not harming each other but they are dependent on each other that is why that process is known as mutual dependence. I hope all of you will be able to understand what is mutual dependence. Look animals, animals use the oxygen which is given by the plants. We the human beings and different type of animals which survive in this earth we all are dependent on oxygen and where from we get that oxygen? We get that oxygen from nowhere but the plants okay then we human beings eat different parts of the plants like leaves stems roots we are we are dependent on plants for our food also the next point we used used as shelter by animals look plants not only us but also different type of animals they use the plant as their habitat okay then number four Human being use plants to make their houses. We made different type of furnitures. We made different type of equipments to build our houses by using the plants. 
Okay, now it's plants turn. How the plants are getting help from the animals? Look at this. Number one, the carbon dioxide which we used to exhale that has been taken by the plants. So that is number point number one. Use carbon dioxide given by animals. Then depend on animals for nutrition. Look, when when human beings or different type of animals used to die, what happens? We used to put them under the soil and then the dead body used to rot in a way and then from this rotten materials the plants used to get nutrition so the plant is getting nutrition from the rotten materials of the human or or the animal's dead body that is how the animal is helping the plants now point number three dependent on animals for pollination and seed dispersal so there will be two new terms for you that is Pollination and seed dispersal. Dear learners, a question will be in your mind. What is seed dispersal and what is pollination? Let's learn what is dispersal and what is pollination. Okay. So, these two particular definitions are very, very important for your PC examination. So, look at this. You can see a flower and a bee. The bee is taking pollen from that particular flower. Flower. I'm sorry. I beg apology for that. So, this flower, flower, particular flower, from this particular flower, the bee is taking the pollen and that bee will sit into different, different flowers at the same time. So, what will happen? The pollen will be transferred from one flower to another flower and that process will be known as pollination. So, what is pollination? Transfer of pollen from one flower to another flower so that the plant can make new seeds that is known as pollination okay then seed dispersal so how the seed used to get dispersed dispersed from one place to another place that process is nothing but seed dispersal look transfer of the seed away from the parent plant is known as seed dispersal so it will come to your mind what is parent plant so parent plant is that particular plant from where seed used to get dispersal from one place to another place so, dear learners, there is two very, very important definitions for you. One is pollination and another is seed dispersal. So, let's move to the next one. Look, this ecosystem have a different, different type of animals and different type of living things and non-living things. So, all these living and non-living things are interacted or interconnected between each other and on that particular interconnection there is a flow of energy which is known as energy flow okay so plants get the energy from the sun where from the plants get energy we all know sun is the source of all energy so the plant gets energy from the sun then where from the animals get energy animals get energy from food and if you ask me where from the animals get food the animals get food from the plants so here is a chain here is a chain between the living and non-living things so this energy flow can be explained in two ways what are those there are nothing but food chain and food wave so now we will learn what is food chain and what is food wave the students we all know that in a particular ecosystem there are a lot of living and non-living things exist so from the grass to the eagle all are living things but these things are in a chain that chain particular chain is known as food chain so how why it is known as food chain we will learn it now look at this you can see grass grass is nothing but a primary producer with the help of sunlight grass used to grow then that particular grass is eaten by grasshopper that grasshopper is eaten by frog and that frog is eaten by a snake and the snake will be eaten by the eagle so here the chain there is a chain occurring so this chain is known as a food chain okay why it is known as food chain because have a look this particular grass is the food of this grasshopper and that grasshopper is being eaten by the frog by which manner that is nothing but its food so the food look all the animals 
all the animals in this chain are directly or indirectly depends on plants and why are they depending on each other they are depending on each other for energy and that is why this process is known as flow of energy okay so on that particular flow of energy the first part is food chain okay so an insect eats the, uh, the plant and a frog eats the insects so what i have already told these things so if anyone ask you that what is the definition of food chain so your answer will be the path look the path of food energy in an ecosystem from plants to animals is called a food chain okay i'm repeating the uh, definition for you the path from where the path from where the energy is transferred in an ecosystem from the plant or you can say from producer to the animals is known as a food chain okay so now in an environment in an ecosystem we all know that not there are thousands and billions and millions of animals insect different type of living things uh, exist in in a, in a particular place so what happens there will be, will there be a only single food chain no so for that reason there will be different type of food chain so what will happen when there will be different type of food chain for different animals different living things then what will happen it will turn into a web and that particular web will be known as food web okay so in an ecosystem we all know there are many food chains so look at this this is grass the grass is eaten by grasshopper the grasshopper is eaten by different type of uh, uh, snakes or insects or or, or 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 the larger animals so here we can see that the larger animals they are also eaten by their uh, uh, more larger animals so here different type of food chains are connected together so as if you if anyone ask you that what is food web then you will say that several food chains different food chains when connects together they forms a web which is known as food web so the students we learn today about our environment our environment consist of two type of thing which is living thing and non living things we learned about the definition of living things and non living things we learned about the dependence of living things and non living things we learned about the mutual dependence of living things and non living things and we learned about important definitions i am repeating the important definitions for all of you first one is habitat the second one is pollination the third one is ecosystem and the fourth and fifth one is food chain and food wave these are the most important definition for your pc examination i hope you enjoyed my class see you in the next class that class will be based on environmental pollution hope to see you then thank you very much assalamu alaikum